Hi. Uh, thank you guys for being here. I should be speaking Mandarin, but I think most of the Chinese speakers here already have the hearing thing, uh, and not vice versa. So I guess I'll speak in English. Um, and uh, so I'm, uh, I work with the company that's hosting the event, and they lost my PowerPoint. Um, so I guess I'll tap dance before they got the PowerPoint. Um, okay, today we're going to talk about cloud gaming, and uh, honestly speaking, you know, I, I give about 20 some odd speeches all over the world, and I should be used to this. Uh, but 30 minutes before uh, getting on stage, I was, I found myself quite nervous, uh, because I realized uh, no one is an expert in this field yet, yet, and no one is qualified to talk about this subject. Um, but, you know, I've spent a lot, of, a lot of time thinking about it. I've spoken with uh, developers who are building the platforms, and I've spoken with analysts who are putting out reports on the subject. So, uh, in another word, I've spoken to all the experts I could find on the subject. Uh, and I, I hope they can find the PowerPoint when I, before I run out of subjects. Um, so what is cloud gaming? Let's talk about this. Um, a lot of you don't have any concepts and some of you have some, some ideas. But what I want to tell you is it's not what you think. I really don't think cloud gaming is what you think right now. Cloud gaming is not emulating PlayStation 4 on the server so you can stream it onto your phone and play it that way. I don't think that's cloud gaming. And actually, if that's cloud gaming, I think that's quite boring and lame. And I have uh, played such uh, deployment uh, already, and they're really boring. And, and by the way, if you're just doing that, uh, with the technology that we have today, you cannot play PUBG. You cannot play PUBG that way. It's going to just be too clunky. All right, let's start. Okay, this is uh, the opportunity that we see, cloud gaming in, in Asia. Um, worldwide, 1.4 billion, and uh, the gamers, it's going to increase, and the largest cloud gaming markets in Asia, we believe it's going to be China and Japan, and, and Korea, to, to some extent. And I, yeah, I need to do a, do a mention. Uh, all of the data in this presentation, they're, pre, uh, they're uh, provided by uh, Nico, Nico Partners. Yeah, we, we are at the dawn of, of cloud gaming. This is the year before it's going to be big. Um, in Asia, it's going to reach $270 million this year, and it'll move to $3 billion at two, 2023. There'll be 3 million cloud game platforms, uh, platform users in Asia this year, primarily from subscription and uh, B2P in Japan. Uh, if you're not familiar, Check out uh, GeForce Now. It's, it's not a 3D card. It's a cloud service based in Japan. Rising to 60 million in 2023, uh, most of the players will engage some free-to-play or time-based fee platforms. The big bump in users is likely to happen after that. So it's predicted that in the year 2023, Cloud gaming is going to be a major player in our business. You're not convinced yet, but you, you will be at the, the end of this lecture. We believe that cloud gaming is still in its infancy after the growth is limited by the lack of cloud gaming platforms. I, I actually think we're limited uh, by two aspects. One is, one is technology. That's, that's going to be solved very soon next year. And the second one is going to be content. Pay attention to the war between Disney and Netflix and Amazon. 
and pay attention to what they will do in the following years. So the companies that's got access, sometimes they don't have content. And some com sometimes the company that's got content, they don't have access. And the same thing will happen to cloud gaming. So looking ahead, cloud gaming provides an excellent opportunity to remove costs and platform barriers to gaming that exists today. In my summary about my speech in the article online uh, about this speech, I talked about how frustrated I am as a game developer, or used to be a game developer, that there used to be just game developers and game players, players. And then publishers show up in the 80s, and everybody hated publishers because they, they assert themselves in the middle, they have no value, they change games you know, in any random directions, they're, they're not listening to the players, and they ignore the developers, uh, and the publishers were hated. You know, if you, if you know the international uh, game industry, you know, you know how Electronic Arts is being hated, and you know how Activision is being hated sometimes, and whatever companies they buy turns to crap. Um, and then, so, you know, it goes on. Publishers, uh, they became important. Developers, they're less important. Now, between the publishers and the players, now we got marketplaces, we got app stores, we got Google Play, and 50 Android marketplaces in China, and so much more. So the value chain started getting longer and longer, and now we have ad networks, and they are taking away all of the profits in game industry. And now some of the ad networks are starting game divisions. So who needs the publishers? And ad networks become more and more powerful. And you know, it's really frustrating because they don't know games. They don't make games, they don't play games. They don't know which directions games should go. They just want to monetize their traffic. They just want to monetize their traffic. So um, I think cloud gaming is going to be a disruptor in the next few years. Uh, you'll notice that on, on the mobile, mobile game platforms, a lot of the big publishers in the past they have very little presence. I mean, EA is catching up. Activision, before they bought King, uh, they didn't have a lot of success on the mobile platform. So whenever there's a new platform coming in, the old and big legacy companies, they have a hard time adapting because sometimes success is their worst enemy. And I believe cloud gaming is the next big change, big change, big shift. Um, so w I actually think the biggest winner for the cloud gaming is going to be smartphones users. Um, it's, it's not necessarily PC or your Mac. I mean, uh, GeForce Now, they actually, you know, their marketing slogan is, now you can play PUBG on your Mac. Um, yeah, fine, if you, if you only have a Mac, I guess that's good news to you. Um, but I don't think that's what it's about. You know, I, I love the convenience of uh, my mobile phone wherever I go. I can use it to pay bills, call taxis, and so on and so forth. Um, and I, I think part of that new thing is I can play high quality games, high quality games on my phone, and I'm not constrained by the GPU or the battery power um, in my phone. And I believe 5G is going to be an enabler. 5G, you have much better, much wider throughput, and you have shorter latency. Um, and this year, November 1st, in China, uh, they have rolled out 5G. Actually, yesterday, I was, uh, uh, I went to Haiyanchen, coastal city, and uh, I looked for 5G uh, phones. They have them. And uh, in fact, quite interesting enough, they were trying to push sell me this 5G wireless router at my home and ask them, I have a 4K TV, can I stream 4K content uh, to, my, to my TV, is it good enough? And they say, yeah, that's fine. So uh, while I'm concerned about, you know, how is the, how, you know, have they set up all the towers and, you know, uh, cell, cell stations, but it, 
it looks like if you're not moving around too much, you're not going to second and third tier cities at the moment, uh, most of Shenzhen is being wired up. Um, so 5G is here. It's not everywhere, but it's here for, for now. A business model for cloud gaming platform that uh, will be important. We believe initially it's going to be subscription based. Basically, like, you, like Apple Arcade, you pay a monthly fee, you play different games um, using your subscri subscription. I'm not sure how, um, how quality this, the, the collection will be, but initially I believe that's how it's gonna work, or it could be um, uh, premium, pay to download. Crossplay with cloud cloud gaming, you can do crossplay very easily. In fact, this make make this makes a lot of sense for crossplay. Right now, to make crossplay work, you have to do a PS4 version, Switch version, PC version, mobile version, and you have to do it with them, you know, somewhat separately. But um, on cloud gaming, they're not you're not rendering them differently. You're all, you're all playing on the cloud. You're not playing on your device, you're playing on the cloud. So in Asia, I would believe uh, China, Japan, and Korea are going to be big markets for cloud gaming. Tencent has a high chance of success uh, because it, ha it has Tencent Cloud and it has a library. So they have both. They have back end and they have content. The only thing they don't have are those cell towers. So they have to work with the carriers. And Western cloud game services have a good chance uh, of reaching Southeast Asia. Uh, Microsoft has uh, their xCloud. And uh, NVIDIA, they're, they're launching GeForce now in Japan. Google would not be able to, to penetrate China, unfortunately. Um, so Chinese companies will have a good competitive advantage in mainland China. Um, Google Stadia is not going to be allowed to come into China. And Stadia, right now, one GPU is only supporting one, uh, one player. So it has some problem with scaling. And we believe that cloud gaming has a huge potential in India as well, because potentially with lower spec phones, you can still play cloud gaming. Uh, traditional game digital distribution will, uh, will still be majority of uh, Asian game industry uh, revenue because um, it will take a while to catch up. I, I'm not concerned about the throughput, to be honest with you, on 5G. I'm more concerned about the latency because the latency will, will be a killer if, if there's any latency at all. Uh, gamers can really tell. I tried to play Temple Run on Hatch uh, over Wi-Fi, and that, that was not a good experience. And I suspect the latency was like 100 millisecond for me, between my input and my uh, uh, perceived delay, uh, but it was bad enough that I didn't want to continue that experience. Okay. And this is the ecosystem today in Asia. These are the companies that's investing in, in cloud gaming already. So forward looking, we expect the cloud game platform service revenue will, uh, will be 2.74% of total gaming revenue that doesn't sound like a lot. So, so was uh, mobile game business back in 2009. We believe the cloud gaming platform will grow significantly after 2023 uh, um, if we're able to overcome many of the barriers today. I actually think the, the latency is the, the biggest barrier uh, in my mind. And let's look at the uh, advantage of cloud gaming. So. You don't need the high-end hardware. 
I don't know how many of you guys had 3DO or PlayStation 1 um, consoles. I remember the, the manufacturers were telling us, don't put them on carpet, don't put them on the ground with carpets on because they need to suck the air in and ventilate you know, the heat out. Um, you, you don't need to worry about that kind of stuff anymore. In fact, you don't own the hardware. There is no hardware in your living room. If you have a 4K TV and you pay for 4K quality, you will get 4K gaming experience at home. If you have 8K TV, fine. If you, if you pay for it, you get 8K, 8K resolution, 8K quality. Vice versa, on your phone, you don't need 4K quality or 2K. So cloud, cloud gaming platform can just give you exactly the kind of resolution you need. It will render for your, for your desired device. So no bandwidth will be wasted. So it can scale up or scale down. And no hardware today can, can really do that. You can play HD, 4K, anywhere. Instant play and, and trial. You can play them you know, for, for free. Um, and dynamic game worlds and game services. So open world, sandboxes, um, all of that is possible. I mean, in a way, if you think about cloud gaming, in a way, you're watching a TV show that you are, you're controlling your character in that TV show or movie in a world. You're just moving about in an open world and you're just basically paying for a camera in that virtual world and render it to your device. That's, that's another way to look at cloud gaming. So the setup is actually awesome for MMORPG uh, or, uh, you know, or the Oasis like in, uh, uh, in the recent movie, uh, uh, player, get ready, player one. Um, and we believe the success of cloud platform will continue to uh, will offer multiple business models and we can play games. I think playing games offline is going to be the trick here. Uh, if you're offline, you're not connected to the cloud. So how do we make it happen? Um, and support existing game libraries. Um, and actually, another advantage here is all of the vintage games that you ever know of. PlayStation 1, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced, Sega, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all of that can be on the cloud. If you want to play any retro game, they will all be there. And it has already begun. There's Stadia, there's GeForce Now, and EA is, is doing a trial on cloud gaming. So consider this uh, lecture a wake-up call. It's already here. I'm not a prophet. I'm just telling you what has already begun. And the, there's, there are disadvantages of cloud gaming. Um, you have to be on internet. And the video compression is a must. Otherwise, the, if the video of the video game is uncompressed, to your phone, it's just the bandwidth requirement would just be too great. So there's going to be some video compression involved. You know, and latency, latency and the lag, you know, I talked about that. But remember MMORPG back in, let's say 2003, 2004? That's when we heard the, the term lag. I don't think the term lag even existed in our vocabulary. Before EverQuest, before Ultima Online, I don't think we heard of the term lag. Um, we have that term because we don't like it and we need to have a name to call things that we don't like. Um, so anyway, uh, we don't want lags with, uh, with cloud gaming. And high data usage, so I guess our carriers will be happy that we have 5G and we need to use 5G to, to get to play our games. So, you know, that could be bad for us, for our pockets. I mean, so now we're paying Apple 30% for every game, every cent that we, we're spending. Um, in the future, we may be paying someone else. We may be paying our carrier for the access to high-end games. Okay. Um, and I believe mobile games will be the biggest winner in 5G. Because, like I said, everybody has one, or almost everybody has one. Actually, the number is globally 47% of the people, population, 
have, have it. And in two to three years, 66% of the population will have it. So the growth is going to come from mobile phone penetration as well. So think about gaming devices. Mobile phone is the biggest market penetrating device uh, in the world today. Um, so cloud gaming, mobile phone, everybody has it and the device is cheap. Potentially it's the cheapest gaming device in the market. Um, so the entry barrier will be less. And with a cr piece of crap mobile phone, it can play triple A quality. And if I'm not mistaken, you'll be able to play quadruple A quality video games. Why is it? Because I have, I have never played games in 4K. I haven't. I have not played games in 4K with 3D glasses, VR, AR. And you can do that with cloud gaming because you can just command more GPU and CPU on the cloud. And, and that's how Amazon Cloud works today. So um, it's, not, it's not a pipe dream. It's just a different architecture. And I haven't told you why I think cloud gaming is going to be important yet. I just want to give you some background knowledge. Whoops. Okay. Uh, I think this is the end. Okay. So remember the, the beginning of my lecture, I told you guys um, cloud gaming isn't about streaming video to your device. It isn't about sending your input to the cloud because that's what you think before this lecture. So I was thinking about, well, you know, Stadia, uh, I, you know, sounds stupid because why, why do I want to play Android games? I have an iPhone. Yeah, well, or well, why, why do you want to play iPhone games if you have an Android? Uh, okay, I can play PlayStation 4 games on my mobile phone. That sounds interesting. But I have a small screen. Why do I want to play PlayStation 4 games with such a small screen? And the more I think about it, the more I think about this is, more, this is very gimmicky. And then I just, something clicked in my head. You don't need to emulate anything. Because right now, today, all the cloud gaming, we're talking about emulating Android, emulating Xbox, emulating PlayStation 4. You don't need emulation. You can actually have a virtual spec on the cloud gaming. So actually, I think this is what's happening. There would be a cloud gaming spec that has no hardware. There's no, the hardware is not physical. I think the first virtual spec will will come to existence. So you actually write a game for a virtual machine that's not physical, and it will render on the cloud. And it's scalable. So it will use more GPU or mem more memory or CPU as it need. You can write the game that way. So you don't have to worry about CPU, the heat from the CPU. You don't have to worry about how many GPU you have or how, how much RAM, DRAM or video RAM you have. It's going to be virtualized on the server side. And the more I think about this, I started thinking, gosh, you don't need PlayStation. What is Sony gonna do? Well, we don't have Sega now anymore, right? What is Sega doing? Well, they have some libraries. I guess they're, they're doing something with that, but they certainly don't have Saturn or Dreamcast or whatnot. They're not a hardware company anymore. And Nintendo almost gave up their hardware business. So, you know, unless the new next coming, coming hardware, gaming hardware devices actually give the players a different kind of feeling, like, you know, it's a different control or it reads my mind, or reads my movement. Uh, well, my mobile phone already does that already. So it needs to do something that nothing else does today for me to want to buy that new hardware. Otherwise, it can be simulated. And I think this is the beginning. And, and once people start thinking about this, you cannot turn them back. You don't need Xbox. You don't need PlayStation. You don't need Switch. I mean, Switch is kind of nice. It, it's, I mean, I have better experience on Switch than on my mobile phone. Um, I wish someone would, would put that joystick on my mobile phone. Uh, 
So my point is, it's not about streaming. It's not about, I don't think it's about uh, xCloud or Stadia. Um, I actually think it's about virtualizing game hardware. So you don't have to have a fixed game hardware. It, it can be in flux and you can easily change the spec and, and command more processing power. And the winners are going to be NVIDIA and AMD. And I think they know that. But uh, we're not, we're not, the industry has not realized it yet. So I think they're playing along with the industry. I think they already know. They know there will be, they'll be in need. We're going to need millions of GPUs on the cloud. And they know because they're the only supplier for, for GPUs in the world today. You know, there may be more in the future, but we need, we're going to meet, need millions, if not billions of GPUs on the, on the cloud, not, not in our phones. And it makes my phone temperature high and run out of batteries. So when I play games, I just watch my power, power bank just like, like that. Um, and uh, hopefully that won't happen in the future. So um, I don't know how many of you are game developers. I, I, I go around the world, I speak to a lot of game developers, and I realized in China, a lot of the game developers, they're still writing to their servers. The servers are running Intel, running Linux, and two-way, two four-way processors running 32 gig memory. They worry, they think about hardware specs on the server, but the Western developers, they say, I don't know. I don't know what my server is run, what operating system my server is running. They just write to AWS uh, protocols. They just speak to the server and it does stuff. They don't worry about temperature in the server room or, or one, they just don't. They, don't. they don't know what hardware or operating system the server is running, they just write to the API. Most Western developers are already doing that. While most Chinese developers are still figuring out what kind of specs uh, and, and, and actually when you need to scale up the server farm, they have to call the cloud company and, and do things manually while on AWS or similar or, or Google, Google Cloud, it's somewhat automatic. You can do that through scripts. And it's the same metaphor. The same similar things will happen to, to mobile game. Um, you don't need a physical box. You just need internet connection and everything will, will show up on your screen. I mean, think about all the 3D animations that you watch at home, right? You watch, I don't know, what's the latest one from DreamWorks or from Fox. Um, you don't need to render the 3D graphics. They're just images sent to your screen. Um, and cloud gaming is, is e the equivalent of that. You know, when you see it on your screen, it's already rendered. You're just seeing the images. Um, not to mention if it's augmented reality or virtual reality, all of that will be enabled by 5G and a lot of that will be mobile, mobile, mobile device based. Okay, I guess I'm uh, available for one or two questions. Any questions? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm Anton uh, from My Games, your yeah. friend. <laughs> anyway, uh, what, what actually you give some very bold predictions, right, for the future of, you know, like of cloud gaming and uh, that it will grow, grow exponentially like mobile games. But why do you think it's not just a fad? Because you know like Oculus, right? That Oculus technology that really just, it, it was really something really great in VR technology. This technology is decent, you can do amazing stuff. But, and it has really strong parent company, Facebook, right? So like Google Stadia. But still, I don't think that VR and VR is as big like as mobile games. It's not developing exponentially. Why do you think that cloud gaming will just go up, up and away like this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you for the question, Anton. Well, I was, uh, I was a skeptic uh, like you. And the more I study into the matter, I realized, no, the, you know, the pot of gold is just too great on the other side of the rainbow. I mean, it's, it's so big. And it allows me to tear down walls. You know, as a, as a game developer, I've been in this business for 33 years, and there are just more walls and walls around us. You can't do this because someone is already doing that. You can't do that because, you know, blah, 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 
right? And, and now you have to spend most of your income on buying, buying traffic. So, uh, you know, I embrace things that will tear down walls in our industry. And I, I think cloud gaming is going to be one of them. Like, I can get rid of hardware. Right, so, so I think that's a strong incentive. Um, because the industry should be about content. It should only be about content, right? But, and we hear about content as king once in a while in this industry. After a while you hear uh, platform is king. Like what the heck, right? Platform is king. Um, and then right now I feel like traffic is king. Because if you have no traffic, it doesn't matter if you have good content because no one's going to find out. So, uh, so that's my personal incentive. I, I, I would like to tear down walls uh, and democratize things for the developers. I think this is going to be really great for developers because developers, they can write small games, big games, very big games uh, for all devices. I mean, we talked about multi-platform, right? Like, all platform access, cloud gaming is going to solve that just like that. You don't need Unreal, you don't need Unity. I mean, you, you can still use them. I'm just saying you don't have to use them for cross-platform. So I think cross-platform, multi-platform uh, on cloud, that just comes very naturally. Cross-play comes very naturally. Um, so there are a lot of uh, benefits over there. And, and I think VR, I don't like VR. You know, anything that, that, that makes me walk into a wall, that I, I, don't, I don't like it. And anything that makes me look like a, like a dork, I don't like it. Um, and and VR, VR does both, both of those things. Um, but unfortunately, I think um, some of us, some of us will still like the, the total immerse, immersive experience, and, and VR does give you that. Um, and I think the technology is getting better. I think eyeball tracking is very important and uh, depth perception. I think all of that is coming and I think we're getting there, you know. So um, VR with mobile, so you can move about. Um, and, and AR, I don't think AR ev ever really went away. So uh, I'm very bullish about cloud gaming, somewhat bullish about AR and VR. I'm not bullish about blockchain. <laughs> in, in gaming. Uh, yeah, so this is the new territory. I'm very, very excited about cloud gaming and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.